Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Mark with FM Jeeping and we're gonna jump right into the comp cut on the Jeep Cherokee XJ. I've got the rear all taken apart. I got two more panels I have to do. I'm, get, I'm making preparations for my, my rear uh, comp cut. Um, I'm still undecided on whether or not I'm gonna to try to utilize the factory tub or cut the tub in half, move it back and expand it. I'm not sure if I'm going to run the shocks through the floor and leave it kind of open so you can kind of see right through the rig. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, especially for something that's still gonna probably be driven on the road for at least the next year or two, or that's the plan. So I'm gonna try my hand at making some shock towers. Um, hopefully those come through, come out. But I really can't do much here except for prep. I gotta pull the, the armor off and prep. I've gotta figure out where this rear tire is gonna go. So I need to remove the gas tank so I can move the axle back. I'm thinking between four and six inches. I have to see what my rear suspension is going to allow me to do in terms of how much of a stretch I can do. And that will dictate where the shock towers go, how far I have to cut, and, um, and where the rear axle ultimately ends up. But doing so, I'm going to lose the ability to keep my gas tank outside the rig. Not a problem. Um, you know, there are fuel cell options. I've seen people even take the factory, um, factory tank lay it right here on top of the floor. I've seen guys kind of um, cut it out, sink the floor down, seal it off so the tank isn't sitting as high and it's kind of embedded in the floor. I've got to see what, how much up travel I'm looking to get underneath the rig, depending on, which will depend on if I counter sink the, the tank. I don't think I'm gonna do it because I'd like to have as much room in there as possible, but uh, time will tell. I should know that in the next couple of weeks. So, that being said, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, pull off the rear quarter panel armor uh, and get ready for the next kind of phase of this build, which is the rear comp cut. So now I'm gonna start planning. I'm not gonna start cutting yet, but I'm gonna start planning where I want to cut and everything like that. I also gotta figure out what I want to do with the fuel filler. Uh, I'm gonna remove the old one. I don't know if I want to try to relocate it up here somewhere um, or further back here. I don't know. So I might do a recessed one. I see people uh, get rid of uh, the window and put it up there. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd like to try to keep it somewhat aesthetic so I don't know but I'm gonna get this out now so I can uh, figure it out because if I can figure out the driver's side the passenger side is much easier because there's nothing really in the way it's the filler neck that's the thing
So I'm gonna make room for the tires by cutting the inner fender well, as well as raising um, the fender cut on the outside as well. I'm gonna start on the inside so I know, so I can get to the outside a little bit more. And I'm gonna to try to go as high as I can without making the lines look um, really out of place. So disclaimer, I'm still undecided whether or not I'm running a fuel cell or um, a stock fuel tank. Either way, I'll most likely have to fuel inside the rig unless I come up with another method of um, an outside fill, which ideally is what I want, but we'll see what happens when I get there. So what I'm gonna do right now, find the center of the well, go ahead, cut it out, cut out the inner part so I can have access to this. And I wanna try to cut this out without causing too, too much damage. Um, so I can start planning the overall cut. So now that I got the inside roughly cut, uh, just so I can kind of work around, see what I'm working with, um, I have a way better picture on how I want to do this. Now, um, before I can even finish the inside, uh, the, the, the inside on the driver's side, is I need to know what the outside cut's gonna look like. Now, I have a rough idea what I want to do. I've got to, um, I've got to figure out this angle here. I might, I wanna take it to about an inch below this body line here, and then down. That'll give me a lot of up travel. Um, it gets rid of my gas tank problem. I just need to fix, I just need to add on right here, and then I can fold it back and weld it to uh, the doghouse in the back there. But yeah, this it'll get rid of all this. I will have a ton more room for that wheel to go up, which will be key, especially given the new suspension that I'm gonna be running on it. And that kind of is gonna go with what I'm gonna do on the front. Now the front, um, I'm kind of landlocked in terms of my, um, my rocker here, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of follow something very similar. I'm gonna have like a straight line up here and then a soft turn, and I'm probably gonna hug just below another inch below this, and then take this all the way down to right about here. So I want the fenders and the cuts to be relatively similar, so that way it doesn't look out of place. But yeah, I'm gonna sleep on the design that I put up here now, maybe talk to a couple people, and um, and if that's what I designed to go with, then we can start cutting. Um, we can finish cutting the inside, and then we can start planning our doghouse. So, excellent. So today's the day, gonna go ahead and cut the rear quarter. Um, first I gotta, patch the gas filler uh, hole. So I'm only gonna do a little four x four patch with a piece that I cut out from my hood a few years ago. I decided to save it because I, I knew it'd be useful sometime. Um, it's got a slight bend to it, so I just gotta 
put a little curvature on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, tack it in, burn it in, and then uh, we should be ready to cut. Finished doing a quick weld on this. Uh, definitely could be a little bit better, um, but for all intents and purposes, it'll work. I just want the metal to be, you know, seamless, you know, not have a big hole where I cut it because I'm gonna be putting um, armor over this, but it would be nice just to have that metal there to make it solid and have something to uh, weld to on the inside when I do my, uh, my dog houses. So, I'm gonna go ahead, clean this up one more time, put the template over, and uh, we can start cutting. All right, I think I've come to my conclusion here. Now, I would have liked to come straight up here and then go this way, but obviously the door is in the way and I really don't want to mess with the door too much because that still needs to be functional. So I'm gonna soft angle this off here, maybe round this out just a hair, but I'm gonna cut it short here and I can do that with, um, with a flat disc. Come down here and then um, this is the new panel right behind here that I put in and cut down here at an angle. So I think I like it. I think I like it, so moment of truth, let's do it. I'll let the dust settle a little bit, but yep. All gone. All that rusty shit, man. Now I just gotta uh, open up this a little bit more and take out this section that I cut here. smooth this out. I might even hammer this up a little bit. Get all hammered up. We'll see what happens, but yep. So we're good. So far I like the corner. I just gotta smooth this all out a little bit. Make it a little bit more seamless, but yeah. Cool. Off camera I went ahead, did the passenger side as well. One thing I did on this side that I didn't do on the other side is on the other side I cut down here. I took it all the way to the seam. Now, that thing was a mistake on my part because now I can reuse, I didn't cut down as far, and I can reuse the factory sheet metal, save me a little bit of time, save me a little bit of welding. Instead of having to weld down here and make a patch, I literally was able to do this seam here. This is a little messy, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. But um, I'm kind of in a holding pattern for now. I ordered some rear shock towers. I was gonna try making them, however, I don't, necessarily know the width of my shock um, so I'm gonna kind of err on the side of caution and believe that Barnes who is where I'm buying them from um, or the company that makes them uh, would know better than I would I kind of need those to come in get those hard mounted in so I can start building the tubs around them but uh, yeah the XJ has been on a diet I just need to go back in 
make this panel all the way to here and um, then I can start cleaning up and figuring out what the end result of uh, back here looks like. I might, I might angle this out, I'm not sure yet. So, well, uh, this is kind of an as you go process, but don't make my mistake, cut, it's better to cut too little than cut too much. And now I have to do extra work. But that was the first cut, and I kind of figured, you know, I didn't know any better. So, don't make the same mistake I did. All right, so what I'm just gonna do right now is uh, clean up all this uh, seam with sealer. I clean it up, figure out what I'm looking at so I know where to cut. So basically, I think my line's gonna be basically here, and then I've gotta figure out what this is gonna look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all this stuff on both sides and uh, see what we're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I intend on breaking this project up into multiple different videos so that way you can kind of see each step of the process without really kind of cutting a lot of it out. So I wanna thank you for watching. If you if you like what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing, hitting that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button to let you know when I upload the next video, which will most likely cover a lot of the fabrication part. And with that being said, we'll catch you on the next one.